Right, today I'm in the Racing Post offices with Josh Stacey. Thanks very much to, for agreeing to talk to us today, Josh. Now, you have amassed nearly, uh, when I last looked, 14,000 followers as Racing Josh on yeah. Twitter. Now, what, what's the demographic of those followers? Have you any idea? 92% uh, male and 8% female. That's last time I looked, gender-wise. Um, I think age... I think there's quite a lot of, of young young people following it, and I think um, I think it's mainly the general audience of racing at the moment. So, well, thirty onwards, I'd say, is a sort of a general racing audience. But there's a lot of youngsters on there as well. Okay, now I was the, the next question. I mean, you're a millennial, as the, as the catchphrase yeah. goes these days. Who <laughs> likes horse racing? Yeah. Now, how rare do you think that is? I don't think it's very rare to like the sport, to know a lot about, to know, to know a lot about it and to go often, I would say it's rare. Um, a lot of my friends I speak to about it sort of, they know racing, they know the Grand National, but they don't know racing. Um, yeah, I think, I think that is quite rare, I would say so. Well, I read that you um, got into racing at a relatively young age, at 12, yeah. when your stepfather was an owner for a horse called Thomas Crapper. So what, what was it that made you fall in love with, you know, obviously getting involved, what made you fall in love with the sport at that age? Um, the, I liked the sport for sort of six months or, or so without really having a proper interest. And then I went to Cheltenham um, in 2013 uh, for trials day. And that sort of opened my eyes big time. Um, sort of previous to that, I went to Stratford. That was my local course. So there's quite a big difference between Stratford and, and then Trials Day at Cheltenham. Um, and I think just the, the general roar and the adrenaline rush that you get when you, you sort of, you like a horse and it's there sort of at the last, that was the main big reason why I got into racing. So the race course experience, but then that didn't, you, that you didn't just sort of get full with that because then you started being a bit of a form beaver. Yeah. And that you, I read, you, well you told me that as a, you studied form as a 14, 14 year old. Um, and you knew the form for a lot of horses sort of off by heart. Yeah. I mean, why, why would you study the form if you're too young to bet? Uh, I was just quite interested in, I was just really interested in sort of the, the, the figures and working it all out. So my mum used to say that I was a bit like Rain Man when I'd be sort of 14, 15, you could, I could sort of list the last, every single winner at the Cheltenham Festival, what came second or third, what had a good run, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I just liked knowing and, a part of it was beating my stepdad, so my stepdad obviously was the one that got me into racing. Um, and it was sort of beating him, because he would almost match me in the races. I'd put my selection up and it was sort of just, can I beat him? Um, so I'd spend time, because I'm quite competitive, making sure that I do. And more, more times than not, it, it, it worked out, so I had to keep up my record. Right. So most 17-year-olds <laughs> are looking forward to being 18, so they can go out in pubs and things. Yeah. I'm assuming you were looking forward to betting. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I think I'd, I'd definitely uh, got my mum to put on a few bets before, um, but yeah, I was looking forward to it big time. That was before she knew it was illegal, of course, everybody <laughs> watching at home. Um, so uh, you are a punter now, I'm assuming? Yeah, I am. And what, what's your angle? What, what do you specialise in, if anything, and what do you look for? Uh, jumps racing sort of my main, my main passion, my main sort of one that I like. I like flat racing, but s some forms of flat racing I couldn't tell you the winner of a 30 runner, five furlong handicap. It's like Swahili to me, couldn't get it at all. Um, but jumps racing, up, I, obviously the local courses around me growing up were jumps, so I just mainly focused on that. I've not really given flat too much time at all. Um, that probably be my, my main interest. So have you put, uh, are you a winning punter? I'd say so, yeah. I track myself and in, in, in the pluses, so that can't be wrong. Okay, now you've, a lot of people complain about, uh, about not being able to get bets on. Are you one of the youngest people to get an account closed yet, or is that something that you're still looking forward to? Uh, I've had one account closure, um, and that was, I think that was Labrooks. Um, yeah, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't major, but it was quite, you know you're doing it right when, when something like that happens, um, but yeah, it's not, not, not happened for quite a while, actually. Now you've got, as we've mentioned before, you've got nearly 14,000 followers on Twitter. Now you put a few tips up. Yeah. 
is do you feel a bit of pressure doing that and do you are you not worried about the backlash of angry skint people if you get one wrong uh not really i've been lucky because a lot of the stuff that i do put on twitter has been quite successful and i've not really had a patch where i've had a, an, a dreadful run um i usually have have had a, a, a sort of a bit of a run and, and managed to get myself out of it um I don't feel pressure because people know that if I'm giving them away for free, then you should expect just you shouldn't expect anything. Um, obviously, it, it depends how much they think I'm credible. Um, that's our own opinion, really. Uh, but no, I don't feel pressure. I do. I, I do when I'm on a big run. So last week, obviously, I sort of had five winning tips, and then the sixth one. That's when you do start feeling pressure when you've got people around the office sort of going, "Oh, what do you think of this? Could it? Could it be?" Um, and that's when the pressure does start to, to rise a little bit when you know that more people are looking at it. And I do think the pressure's definitely r rose, risen, sorry, since the, the following has gone up. Mm, so, so even though you're 19 now, you've been you're quite a veteran really, five years of form study and working out how to pick winners? Uh, I wouldn't call myself a veteran. I'd still say the first sort of three or four years was definitely working it out and, and now I'm sort of a lot more structured and disciplined. Um, yeah, probably not a veteran, but I, I'd like to hold myself with some regard. Right, now, talking about being held in regard, you are now known for producing some uh, really good social media for Thank you. horse racing. So I had a little search on YouTube yeah. yesterday under Joshua Stacey. Yeah. Now, now I know all about the Chalup Girls. Right. One of your videos, <laughs> and I felt a little bit bad watching it, even because they're far too young for me. <laughs> um, now, how did you? And also, was it a mistake to fly to Dublin with your mates when you weren't old enough to drink? There's some quite entertaining stuff on yeah. So, so I made a YouTube channel before I made the racing, and that was sort of my passion yeah. when I was sort of, I think about between 14 and 17. And I think a lot of the people at my age at the time tried it. Um, and it was quite successful, um, and but I have definitely made some questionable videos. Um, wouldn't call myself the best, uh, have the best chat. And I wouldn't say I've got great ideas for college projects. I actually somehow managed to blag that island video as a college project. Um, and yeah, it was, it was good fun though. For anyone that's not watched it, you go and check it out. Josh and his mates um, in Ireland for a night <laughs> and then going back to college the next day. It was uh, quite entertaining. So when did you decide to change tack from teenage angst to racing as your main topic on YouTube? So I went to college for two years and I studied creative media, which is sort of what I'm doing now um, and obviously had experience in, in, in making YouTube videos and doing social media and it was quite successful. Um, com at the time at college completely went off it, didn't really enjoy it at all, I didn't enjoy the videos I was making um, but I still had that passion for racing throughout the whole of college. Um, I go to most Cheltenham meetings, I'd go to racing as much as possible with my mum. Um, so then when I left college I wanted to see what I could do because I know it's going to take a gap year to try and get into racing and I, and I sort of saw a, a gap in the market I, I, I was a Twitter user I followed people like the racing blogger um, and I saw sort of a, a gap in the market for a young person to go into racing um, and I, I thought I had the knowledge I thought I could make the videos and I thought I could market myself in a way that people might like me for that um, or, or, or be interested in to see what I was doing because I'd go to stables anyway before I made videos and I'd, I had friends at, at different yards and that was sort of a thing. So I thought if I could make this, produce it well and, and it, it's almost like a, not a service, but it's like a, a different way of, of, of showing racing. And then you had a lot of views for your, your original teenage um, videos. So how did your original fans react to when you started to do this horse racing stuff? Were, were, were there any sort of crossovers or did they all sort of desert you? Um, I've kept it very separate. Um, it's sort of not something that I've massively brought up with either. Um, I remember that the Twitter account I, I originally had before, I think it had 20,000 followers or so. I was locked out of that. So there was no way of those people knowing. I, was no, I had no way of, of sort of showing them what I was doing now. Um, and I think I've kept it fairly separate. I don't think too many know, um, but I, I wouldn't. I've had, I've had no response because I don't think too many know. Okay, now do you feel that, I mean you're doing what you do off your own bat at your own expense, do you feel that racing as a sport should be doing what you do to attract people of your age to the game? Um, I definitely think they need to 
loosen up a bit and relax. I think the racing can can. I think you just need to make it fun. I think you need to make it insightful, fun, and and appeal to a younger audience because that's sort of my main target market. Um, yeah, I do think racing should should relax a bit and sort of try and get more insight and and not not so, not so much insight, but just just fun videos. I think instead of taking yourself too seriously. Now you, you you go racing. Yeah. You're involved with racing. How welcoming, not just to, not to you specifically, but how welcoming is racing to a young person? I think it's definitely getting better. I think when I first, even in the last year, it's massively changed. I think moving here to the Racing Post, I sort of imagined a quite a, a murky room full of old journalists with, with cigars. Um, but no, it was not what I expected. I was, I was massively surprised when, when I sort of I came in and there was a young, a lot of young journalists, a lot of young people throughout the business and that sort of definitely opened my eyes. And I think different race courses and different, different uh, companies now are doing good schemes. I think Cheltenham are doing a scheme where it's between like 16 and 28 and they're sort of broadening the horizon for young people to get into racing. Um, I don't think it was very accessible before. Um, and I think not just people like myself, but people that are young and are trying to have an, a sort of an opinion on in racing are definitely doing a, a good job at, at trying to sort of open it up and make it more accessible.